Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X.E.L. O. Hey, man, today what we'll be going over is actually exporting inside of Cakewalk. So let's say you have a project that you need to send out to an engineer to mix. I'm going to show you how to actually get all your files in order so that your engineer is happy, which makes you happy, which makes the song better. So everything just runs together. <laughs> all right. So let's go. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk, and this is my light theme. If you're interested in this theme, I have a link below in the description. You can download it and have a video showing you how to install themes as well. So uh, the song that's actually in here is called Footsteps. If you've actually been following my channel, you know that I actually put out a song called Footsteps a while ago. It's on all major streaming platforms. So if you want to check it out, uh, definitely check it out. I'll leave a link below in the description. Uh, but these are like the stems for it, basically. So I kind of narrowed it down just so there's seven because I have a couple of other DAWs that I want to show you guys how it looks inside there once you bounce uh, your clips. All right. So um, let's get started. First thing you want to do um, is actually make a folder on your desktop. So let's do that. I'm going uh, to minimize Cakewalk, create a folder. I'm just going to name it uh, Footsteps Bounce. All right. So now that's on my desktop. Get back in Cakewalk. And that's pretty much the first step of what you want to do is just make a folder just so you know where everything is going. So you have everything prepared when you're actually sending it out to the engineer. All right. So now we're getting into the setup of the project. So you want to make sure everything is set up correct. First step is make sure all your stuff is labeled with a name, right? So it has to have uh, a name inside this right here, this uh, track view. So I have my beat, the footsteps beat. I have a lead ad libs, ad lib two, a hook, hook, hook ad lib, and hook ad lib two. So I have everything set up in here. Everything is labeled so that they won't be confused when they get the project file. Your engineers will thank you. Trust me, they will thank you um, for that. The next step would be to make sure everything is in raw form. That means like no effects or anything is on here. And number three is breaking that rule. So. If you have auto-tune on your track or something that you did on your vocals or inside of the song that you really know that you want and you want it in there, keep it in there. Keep that effect on so that the engineer knows that, hey, this is what he wanted to keep. And all he has to do is blend or mix whatever you did into the, the song when they're actually mixing it. So once you have all that down, what you're going to do is go inside of your, uh, you know, your clips pane here you can you know pretty much put this anywhere and just do a control and all and make sure everything is selected you don't really have to worry about it because everything should be selected when you hit control and all inside here as you see everything is highlighted so now what i want to do is go up to here to where it says tracks and i'm going to do a bounce to tracks uh, and what this is going to do is give them a reference track so if you have the mix how you want it to be and you know it sounds pretty good to you so the engineer will always have a reference track to kind of go back to into the track as well. So I'm just going to hit OK just to bounce it out. I'm not going to change anything in here. Usually you don't have to change anything. Just bounce that track out to make a brand new track. All right. So now I have this track eight here so I can change this and just say um, rough mix. So make sure you're labeling everything. Like I always say, label everything. All right. Footsteps, rough mix. Boom. So now I have the rough mix of the whole entire track. And I have all the stems set up on here. All right, so now you have that. Everything is set up. Everything is set up and ready to go. Now you just want to go and export the actual track. So you can go up to File and do an export. Um, or you can even go to this little box here. It may be in a different location on your Cakewalk, but I have mine right here for export. And you can even export to BandLab. So if you uh, let's say you go to BandLab, right? This little box is going to appear. It's going to tell you what the name of the project is. You can change that name. I'm going to name it... Uh, I'm gonna name it Footsteps Raw Track. And you can you can put a description up here. Um, set up the mix. And you can even make it public on BandLab if you want to. But this is another way you can actually export your uh, stuff out there to the world. And basically you just hit on your upload settings and you wanna do audio track. You can do a project mix down, even though I have it in there. So I'm gonna take off that project mix down. I'm not doing any of the buses. I'm not doing any empty tracks and I'm not doing any MIDI tracks. So then after that, you just hit upload and away it goes off to BandLab. 
All right. So it did complete and it says upload complete project footsteps raw tracks was successfully uploaded to BandLab. So then you can actually go into your BandLab account and share it out if you want to that way or send it to someone that way as well. Uh, There's just another option that you do have. All right. So let's move along. And like your next option uh, in here is like for your audio. So you can choose different types of audio. You have this uh, OMF file. Um, I do have a video showing you guys how to use the OMF file to export in Capo. It is pretty much the exact same. So if I click on that, uh, you'll see here that it's the older version of the exporter. Um, I haven't actually changed this one. You can change your OMF version if you want to or need to. All right. And uh, the OMF works with Pro Tools, Cubase, Digital Performer, the Window, um, and like Logic. So those are a couple of the different ones that it actually does work with OMF. So if I wanted to export this as an OMF file, it'll keep the same time. So it'll keep your tempo. It'll keep your uh, tracks exactly where they are. So any cuts and things you have inside the track, it'll also keep that all the timing will be in there. Some people say it's an easier way to do it. Some people don't. Some people don't like the way it actually comes out. If I did know that the client that I'm sending the mix to uses Pro Tools, this is a very good option for you to get them those files if they ask for it this way. All right. So another way you can actually do it is actually go to your save as, and you want to change this from normal and you change it to the cakewalk bundle. So what the bundle does is actually takes all the audio files, uh, all the plugins that you have and makes it into a bundle. So if the person has the same plugins and things that you do have, it is easier for them to actually open up more, but more than likely they're not going to have everything that you have, but this is, only good for if you're sending it to another person that actually has cakewalk to mix your stuff. All right. And if you go down to the last option on there, which, well, well, they have presets on here as well. So you can kind of set up a preset. Um, you can make your own presets. As you see, I made a couple of presets down here and you want to just go to advance if you uh, just want to export the project. And here is where the fun starts. So we have everything set up. We have our folder ready. Um, so now let's actually do the export. So you want, if you want to, you could do a preset. Uh, you're going to use one of these three here. Track is just going to show, you're just going to actually send the tracks as they are kind of naked. And you'll see it where buses and automation and effects buses are actually gone from here. You see they're not checked. And the uh, mutant track solo tracks are not going to be uh, moved over as well. So this is what the tracks does. So if you do the tracks, no automation and effects is going to take away all the automation on the track. So if you did do like any like uh, panning or um, like auto tune things on here for the actual track on the track itself, the track effects, uh, if you want to do that, that's cool. Um, the third option is the track and through the entire mix. So basically what this does is put anything that's on the track is going to go and be sent to the engineer. And I said, this is usually when you want to actually have uh, your specific auto tune. If you really like the way your auto tune sounds, send that to the mixing engineer and then he'll deal with it and actually mix it into the track itself. So I'm going to click, keep it on this uh, through entire mix and you can always make your own uh, file name. Let's change this. I'm going to go to the tags just so I can put the, uh, the tempo and I'm done. So now I have that on here. And then you, uh, the most, the important part here that we did in the beginning of the video is create a folder. So I'm going to go to my folder. I'm going to go to the desktop footsteps bounce is what I named it. All right. So I have my footsteps bounce folder set up on here on the desktop. And here is where the format is. So your mixing engineer will let you know what they prefer. Um, I know some people that actually use Max. They like the uh, AI FF. Uh, you can do that as well. I would say maybe nine out of 10 times, they're probably just going to say, send me the wave files. But uh, I know the majority of the time I'll get a wave or I'll get a AI FF file that they'll ask me for, or even a flack. I've asked, someone's asked me for that before or one time. But uh, majority of time is just going to be wave. So um, your sample rate, um, I really wouldn't go over 4,800. 4, um, you can, but uh, I'd probably stick with the either the 
the 44 or the 48. Um, I would not go under 24 bit uh, for sending out mixes. Usually a lot of people like the 32 bit because you get to have more headroom inside your uh, actual track. But um, 24 bit is the lowest I would go if you're actually sending it out to uh, someone to get mixed. Dithering, I don't really necessarily use. It can be helpful at times, but I don't really use it. And I leave my buffer size the way it is for their normal playback. You can change that if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can actually change that. Yeah, so now that we have pretty much everything that we want set up, you also have the option to render in real time if you need to render in real time. A lot of people don't like to do that. They like the fast bounce instead. But if you're running into issues, you're getting like a lot of clicks and pops and things like that. The render in real time will probably help out a lot with that. So if we wanted to actually save this as a template, just hit this little plus sign right here. Let's name it first. All right, I'm just going to name it mix one and it's going to create that preset. So now when I go in the list, uh, that mix one is right here. And if you actually change or modified anything, you just hit the plus sign here and it'll save it. I'll give you that option that says overwrite preset, just hit OK and it'll overwrite it. All right, and your range is on here too. So you have your uh, the range of the whole entire track. Just make sure everything is checked that you want to have out to that, that uh, folder that's gonna go to the footstep bounce. Let's just export. So I'm gonna export the tracks and we're gonna send it to that folder. This is what pops up. It's telling me I'm creating eight tracks um, and it's gonna tell me, do I wanna proceed? And this is what it's gonna look like. This is what the names of them are. It's gonna tell me the ad lib and the beats per minute. So I get the, the name of the track and the beats per minute. So I'm just gonna hit on okay. All right, so now that it's done, you'll get your um, your toast right here at the bottom and you can like uh, open up the location. All right, and as you see the folder, the folder popped up and it has all the tracks in there that we uh, exported. So now let's see if it'll actually work and how it looks in the other DAWs. All right, so here I am in Ableton, Live Light um, 10, I believe this is. So I'm gonna hit the tab on here on the keyboard and it'll bring me to the track layout screen. And uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna delete these midis. And I will delete this audio track. So I only have one audio track on there now. All right, so what I wanna do is Go to, I'm gonna to go to options and then go down to preferences. And I'm gonna to go to warp, right? And I'm gonna turn off this thing that says auto warp long samples. What that does is when you try to drag stuff over, it'll adjust the samples that you're bringing in. Really weird. I don't know why they have it set on, on when you first do it, but um, you wanna turn that off. Just make sure that's off if you're using Ableton. And basically what you wanna do is, all right, so I have the folder open on the other window. I'm just gonna kind of grab them and drag them over into Ableton. So um, as you see here at the bottom of Ableton, it'll tell you, uh, hit, hold down control, and that'll kind of break them up as you see here. All right. As you see, Ableton is actually creating the files. And as you see on the right-hand side, all of them are labeled. So the, the engineer can actually see exactly what each track is. So if he needs to move things around, like I will probably want my beat to be uh, up further. So I'll move the beat up and I will move my lead up or at the top and have my ad lib, ad lib. And this is the reference track. So I could bring this one down to the bottom and I can even, uh, I can mute this track here. Right. So now when I play it back, yeah. Extra, eat, elder. Oh. All right, so now you have that inside of Ableton. So I'm gonna close this out. I'm not gonna save it because I don't need it. And let's move on to the next DAW. All right, and that next DAW is Reaper. So I'm going to uh, make sure we kind of do the, follow the same steps. So we're gonna change the tempo. Tempo is very important. 
very important. Make sure you guys are installing or putting in the tempo in your tracks. It is very, very, very important. And it makes everything so much easier. All right, so I have my tempo set on here. I'm gonna drag my files in and I wanna do it on separate tracks. And boom, Reaper has just built all those tracks for me. And it's pretty seamless. Yeah. So boom, so now I have the track loaded in Reaper and I can do whatever I want to. I can mute this one because this is the uh, rough mix. And you see it'll say rough mix inside here. So labeling, it is very important. Tempo is very important. Make sure you have the right setup. All these things are very important for you to actually get what you want uh, from that mixing engineer that you're sending this thing to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And once again, it's your boy, x.e.l.o. Till next time, people. Peace.